What does the bazaar play like? I've been following its development for a very long time and I can finally answer this question. I haven't played it myself, but I've gathered a ton of information that I can now condense into this short informational video. But first, a word not from the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a piece of garbage mobile trash game that you couldn't get me drunk enough to play. If you ever waste your time playing this video game, there is no hope for you. The Bazaar is billed as a hero builder. The shorthand is, and Mr. Ray Noodle, the team lead at Tempo, will hate this comparison, but it truly is the closest too long didn't watch I got. It's one half Slade Spire, one half Super Auto Pets. Let me explain. In general, you build your hero like you would build your deck in Slay the Spire. You go through a series of encounters that allow you to make choices, make purchases, or face a challenge for rewards, all of which affect your build in some way. You improve the items on your board, or you add skills to your hero. And then, at the end of each day, you face another player's hero in an auto battle. Like in Super Auto Pets, the PvP is asynchronous, meaning that the other player is not present to watch this battle. You're just facing a one-time snapshot of someone else's hero at a comparable stage of their run. If you win 10 of these auto battles, you have a winning run. As a brief aside, the reason why Raynad will surely hate this comparison, which will probably be made a lot, is that Super Auto Pets shamelessly copied the Bazaar's asynchronous matching system, allegedly. But because Super Auto Pits came out first, the perception's going to be the opposite of that. And Raynad has expressed extreme salt in this regard. And now you know. So how does a run play, exactly? First, you pick your hero. There are three in the closed beta, with six projected for the full release. Then you choose your starting conditions from the ones offered. One item and one skill picked at random from a large pool. For example, Dooley gets the choice of one of three cores out of a possible six. According to Kriparian, the main source of all this information, each one of these cores plays completely different from the others. After those choices, you go into the meat of the gameplay, gradually making your build. This is the reason why you play the game, making the smartest choices to fit all the randomly offered pieces together into the most badass build you can come up with. The reason why I cite Slade Aspire specifically is because they have the same building philosophy. The variety is such that you can't force an archetype. You can't just say, oh, I'm just going to be the poison build in this one. By design, you have to adapt to the resources you're offered and make the best of them. The building process goes like this. Each day is divided into six hours. Each one of these hours represents an event that you pick from a random choice of three every time, and it can be anything from shops to buy and sell, to PvE battle, to a multiple choice situation. You know, the, the typical roguelike deck builder fair. On the sixth hour, you will face another player's hero at a similar level of progress, a snapshot of someone else's build while they were playing sometime in the past, and then this snapshot gets used for your encounter and then gets discarded forever. You may win or you may lose, and then a new day starts. The game ends when you get 10 wins or when you lose too many times. Instead of the three strikes loss system we're used to, the bazaar uses the prestige counter. You start with a full 20 prestige and lose prestige on losses. The amount you lose is the same as the day you're on. If you're on day 4, you will lose 4 points of prestige. And that in itself kind of opens another possible strategy, like having a losing run because you're trying to build your economy first. I don't know, I haven't played enough to tell you whether that's valid or not, but just the idea seems to have potential. Anyway, once prestige is depleted, you get a one-time only resurrection event that gives you a choice of a fat bonus to see if you can pull out of your nosedive. If you lose again, you're out. At the time of this guide, I haven't been able to find out whether you can gain prestige points at any point. If you can, they're probably quite precious. So how do you build your hero in a general sense? You have three lanes of development. The board, where you keep your items, your set of skills, and your experience level. Experience levels are the most straightforward, you get stat bonuses on level up. Your experience gains are not static though, they will vary depending on your choices. Your skills are static bonuses that can cover every aspect of gameplay, sometimes giving you game-changing synergies with the items you put on the board. There appears to be a huge variety of them, you know, to support that philosophy of adapt to what you're given, and their skill effectiveness will depend on your skill, picking the right ones when they show up. 
The board is the meat and potatoes of your strategy, where your items will activate on a timer and synergize in complicated ways. The variety of these is also staggering far beyond the scope of this video. They can have a pile of different effects, from doing burn damage to charging adjacent items to giving you money and I don't know, whatever is in between. And this being a literal bazaar, your gold will be instrumental in trading for the best items and skills possible. Getting gold is another concern to balance alongside your strategy so you can afford the best stuff available. All this sounds fairly complicated, so how hard is it to play this game? What's the skill ceiling? By all accounts I've seen, the skill ceiling seems to be enormously high. The levels of complexity in min-max and everything appear to be Again, staggering. Once again, I cite Slay the Spire for similarities. If you've ever watched a Jorbs explain everything run, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There are a hundred factors to consider if you want to make the absolute optimal choices. And still, like in Slay the Spire, the game doesn't have a high barrier of entry. Building your hero is a gradual process, reaching higher levels of complexity only as you go along. You begin with a very simple choice of one item, one skill, and then you go on making choices from there. You don't have to be a 400 IQ genius to put a good run together, but you probably do if you are trying to understand a high level match that you didn't build. Look at this thing. <laughs> There's too much stuff going on here to understand it without pausing and looking closely for like three hours or or maybe if you have played the game for 300 of those hours, you can tell what's happening here at a glance. I certainly can't right now. So anyway, that's all I have for you. Hopefully now you have a clear idea of what the game is like. They have a closed beta starting on October 30th, asking for a minimum of $33 to be able to play it. After this, there will be an open beta and ultimately a full release, both of which slated to be free to play with cosmetic only microtransactions, as far as I can tell. This is one of the few games I hype for these days. I, I've been following them for a couple years. Sure hope it doesn't disappoint everybody that's tried it. There was a close uh, friends and family invitational kind of build and everybody that played it was like, wow, this game is actually great. So I'm looking forward to it. I paid those $33 to be into that close beta. So at the very least, I'll tell you my impressions. See you in whatever comes next.